Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, it's been announced that a project to create a similar system to Elon Musk's Starlink Internet Network in Russia is being planned. It's going to consist of a group of 383 satellites for the estimated cost of around 445 billion rubles. That's around $5 million, according to a recent media report. Now, it's anticipated that 329 billion rubles will be sourced from extra budgetary funds, with an additional 116 coming from the government funds. Now, the funds will be allocated for the deployment and development of these communication satellites for the system, which was being constructed by the company Bureau 1440, which was previously owned by entities of the Russian oligarch and billionaire Alisha Ruzmanov. He, by the way, was a shareholder of Arsenal Football Club in London, but he sold his stake in good times so he didn't suffer the fate of Robert Abramovich, who had his club, Chelsea Football Club, stolen from him because he had a Russian passport. It does seem that the thieves in the government of the West have no shame, as I understand in the UK they've just robbed poor babushkas of their pension allowance for winter heating, while the politicians in the UK claim for all their utilities on their government expenses. They say it's Russia and Putin that are evil. But at least the Russian babushkas don't have to choose between eating and heating. Now back to the reasons behind this internet project, because its deployment as the type of communications infrastructure is of paramount importance for Russia's remote regions. Also, it's important for the transportation sector, according to industry analysts. Now, what is the cost of the satellite internet system in Russia? Well, the state is going to allocate 116 billion rubles to create a group of low orbit satellites for high speed internet action across the world between 2025 and 2030. Now, this information is in a major federal report called Internet Access Infrastructure, which has just been published in the media. This is going to form part of a larger national project called the Russian Digital Economy. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. And you can do this by making a small donation that's done by clicking the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Now, everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. And I'm thanking you all for watching now, because I do appreciate all of you. Now, the funds are going to be used to implement the project, which is being carried out by the company, as I mentioned, Bureau 1440. Now, the document states that 383 satellites will be launched into orbit by the end of the decade. Now, the developers are being given 37 billion rubles in the form of preferential loans currently, according to the plan. Plus, the budget is going to earmark another 62 billion rubles and another 17 billion for the procurement of launch vehicles, specifically rockets, for the launch of the satellites into space. Also, the preliminary version of the federal project indicates that the construction of the satellite group will also be financed by extra budgetary sources over the five-year period, with a budget of slightly over 340 billion rubles, which is about 350 uh, so like $3.5 billion. That brings the whole estimated cost to 445 billion rubles, which I have said is about 5 billion. Now, one of the main priorities for the future is the development of satellite communications, said the uh, Minister of uh, Data Economy and Digital Transformation. He said this is all part of our initiative for the digitizing of Russia. Now, the document itself is still undergoing interdependence departmental approval and it may be subject to some revisions. However, the Minister also stated that it would be premature to discuss the final figures. Well, as usual, you know, budgets are always either exceeded, well, not so much in Russia actually. Now, for those of you of a certain age, you'll remember that Russia is the pioneer in satellite technology. Its satellite Sputnik 1 was the first Earth satellite ever, Earth into orbit, I mean. Yeah, before the Americans, or before Elon Musk was even a dirty thought in his mother's head. Now, it was launched in an epileptical low Earth orbit by the Soviet Union on the 4th of October 1957 as part of the Soviet space program. 
sent a radio signal back to the Earth for three weeks before its three silver zinc batteries became depleted. It was the aerodynamic drag that caused it to fall back into the atmosphere on the 4th of January 1958. Now Russia also has a GLOSNAS, which is a Global Navigation Satellite System, which is Russia's satellite navigation, which operates as part of the Radio Navigation Satellite Service. Now this provides an alternative to the Western GPS, Global Positioning System, which is just as well as, just in case the West decides to shut Russia out of the GPS system, that they've done with the SWIFT payment system. So, the development of a low-cost satellite constellation for providing <coughs> service is proceeding according to the current set, uh, schedule. Bureau 1440 has confirmed that it's got the key technologies for the service and they've already been flight qualified and are ready for scaling up. They said there's a clear market need for this type of development of satellite internet in Russia. Now, in March of this year, Maxut Shadiev, who's the Minister of Digital Economy, Communications, Mass Media of Russia, stated that by 2028, all Russians will have access to in-flight internet. Now, at the time, experts highlighted the potential for domestic low satellite orbital constellations to provide this uh, access. Plus, in May, Russian Railways and Bureau 1440 entered into an agreement to collaborate on the utilisation of satellite technologies in the railway system. Also, the Ministry of Digital Development has announced the launch of three spacecraft in collaboration with 1440, utilising the 5NTN standard for subscriber communication. But I've got a good Rush profile, the counterparty verification service. Bureau 1440's uh, founders are not listed in the Unified State Register of Legal Entities. In fact, until 2022, Megaphone, the Russian mobile phone company and internet company, was amongst the company's founder. Plus, until uh, 2021, ICS and VT Bank uh, were listed as shareholders. However, that said, the pro pro project's plans are very realistic in deployment of the time frames. The necessary number of rockets and satellites in orbit, according to Kai Internet shareholder Sergei Pekterev. The Pekterev asserts that the cost aligns with the preliminary projections for this type of collaboration and it's more challenging to forecast the potential scriber base, given that the majority of Russian cities and cellular operators work primarily on the fibre optic cables, which is well versed in Russia, <coughs> excuse me, as a primary communication channel. But there's certainly a, definitely a need for a reliable satellite internet across Russia, according to Karen Kazaran, who's the director of the Internet Research Institute in Russia. She said this will help resolve the issues of connectivity in the remote regions, particularly those in the far north and along the northern sea route. Plus, satellite communications will facilitate extended coverage where, over the transport system when using the roads and railways. I mean, the internet is a crucial enabler for the development of the freight market and the implementation of modern logistics techniques. Now, according to Com News Research, as uh, Leonard Connick, 28% of Russia's territory is located in the Arctic zone, which is poorly covered by geostationary satellites located above the equator. So, as a result, the new satellite constellations in the non geostationary orbits are of critical importance for Russia. In the global market, there's these types of, uh, of groups. There's two of them. There's low orbit Starlink and OneWeb, and they are experiencing a surge in popularity. Now, Russia already has a project called RASVED, which has been implemented by the private company, as we mentioned before, Bureau 1440. Now, the configuration of the satellite constellation is similar to that of OneWeb. Now, I'm looking at the cost of OneWeb and its constellation includes 648 satellites, amounted to 6.1 billion, which exceeded their initial budget of 3.5. But additionally, OneWeb operates numerous ground, ground gateway stations. Now, as a Russian company, Bureau 1440 will likely face challenges in obtaining approvals to install ground stations around the world. Yeah, it's Russian, so apart from BRICS members, SCO, I think it might actually have a few problems. I mean, that could increase the cost of the project that may have to rely on inter-satellite connections. 
Furthermore, the projected number of Rasmet uh, satellites at 383 units is about half of the number compared with one web. So even without considering the cost of the inter-satellite links, Koenig believes that the Rabbit project cannot be implemented for less than $3.5 billion. So he says that the $329 billion is a significant amount and it's challenging to envisage private investors willing to provide such a thumb. However, I mean, everybody who knows what's happening going in Russia, the government's national welfare will probably step in with a substantial chunk of the funding that it needs. And it's also possible that other parts of the state uh, will invest in it, including the security side of things. The security forces could use their payloads onto board Rasnet satellites or conclude a long-term contract with the Bureau for the provision of internet services and advance payment, and that would allow them to uh, cover their costs. Now, obviously, the satellite internet and the special military operation by all parties has highlighted the necessity for ubiquitous communications, particularly where terrestrial communications, Mr. Chokta, is either destroyed or is absent. I mean, the US Department of Defense has been engaged in collaborative efforts with commercial satellite constellations for some time. And instead of investing in the development of military spacecraft, the US Department of Defense has began to utilize civilian rockets and satellites for the deployment of its payloads. And this basic server is called payload hosting. So the US military is not only saving money, but it's enhancing the security of its space facilities. And this obviously is something that Russia can utilize as part of the new public-private partnership that's worked so well in other areas as Russia moves towards its technological, digital and cultural sovereignty, sovereignty so it's not dependent on the West. Now, thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. And if you feel generous, you can uh, click on the thanks button and make me a small donation. Don't forget to um, the comments section. I look forward to hearing from you, reading your comments and responding back to you. Thank you. And I'll see you all again soon. Thanks.